My name is Sanjay Mazaria. I am a um, um, manager of a children's nursery, a kindergarten in the UK, in London. Uh, and what makes um, my nursery unique is that my home is my nursery. I actually live there. So my children share my living room with me. They share my uh, dining room with me. They share my home with me. I have about 35 children. Uh, I have uh, uh, about 14 staff. They work sort of shifts, so maybe eight at any one time. So I'm very blessed that my commute is literally down the stairs. Great. Uh, just to show you a little bit about our nursery, um, I also have George the Giraffe as part of my nursery. He's our children's favorite. We have we are forest school. Um, we have things like Willow Den, Living Willow Den. We have things like a mud kitchen using real equipment. Uh, none of these plasticky things. So that just gives you a flavor of um, the sort of uh, things that I have in my garden, which, uh, you know, my children share with me. Great. So today I'll be talking about um, uh, what quality means um, in a nursery. And uh, rather than looking at quality from a perspective of, uh, you know, doing a, a bit of reflective practice and uh, working out where your gaps are, uh, COVID sort of um, meant that I really need to look at it in a different way. I need to look at it from a stakeholder's perspective. You know, what does quality mean to them? And to do that, I identified some stakeholders for my nursery. Now, in your uh, situation, you might have different stakeholders. And I'm not saying these are the only stakeholders I have, but these are the primary ones. Obviously, parents is an important stakeholder, yes? Uh, the child a very important stakeholder for me. Yep. Uh, the nursery and its staff. How often do we forget our own team, you know, as part of uh, our critical business, you know? Uh, so they, I think, are a very important stakeholder. We obviously have the regulators, but regulator is good. Uh, but also our peer group. You know, you are what I consider my peer group. You know, um, collectively, you have, you know, even individually, you'll have far more knowledge and experience than I do. I'm very new to this. So they are actually a key stakeholder for me as well. And then, of course, we have the local community. So, you know, we are all based in our communities. We don't sort of, you know, have our nursery in Mars or Moon. You know, we are in a community. And, you know, the community is an important stakeholder for us. So these are the stakeholders I've identified. And what I want to do was to work out what does quality mean for each of them. And this is what I went through, and these are the things I identified. Obviously, in your world, in your business, in your work, uh, different stakeholders, maybe different elements of quality, but it's a way of looking at quality from their perspective rather than yours. Yep. So, um, one other thing, um, just to let you know that I'm using some images in uh, my presentation. These are images uh, from my nursery. So these are my children. Uh, I do have permission uh, to um, make them famous. Hopefully one day they'll repay me with lots of money. Um, but here are our children beautifully demonstrating how you have to balance your stakeholders. Yes, all your stakeholders you have to balance. Okay, no one say, I did not put thought into my presentation, okay? <laughs> so let's put this into context. COVID-19 uh, has changed our business model. Certainly changed my business model. I think it had an impact on almost everyone's business model. And probably forever. Forever meaning until I retire, okay? But certainly for a, a, a foreseeable future. You know, working from home is the new norm. And for me, what that means is, parents are working two or three days from home, and guess what? Oh, I won't send the children to the nursery. You know, I'll look after them, put the TV on, give them a bag of crisps, I'll be on my laptop, let them just watch TV all day, and I'll save some money, yeah? These are the realities that we have to live with. Um, you know, there are financial pressures on parents now, more and more. Um, we are all hit with the financial crisis. Uh, it is becoming more expensive, and it's likely to remain with us for a number of years. Again, another reason why we have to look at the business model and change that a little bit, and why it's really critical to look at uh, your business from a stakeholder perspective. Uh, in the UK, 
uh, our government is not very committed to structural reform uh, of our industry, and that doesn't help us. Uh, I think the Canadians uh, are on a uh, really uh, a, a path uh, which um, puts childcare really high up on the government's agenda. Scandinavian companies, uh, countries do. Uh, I've noticed, I, I read uh, Joe Biden released uh, some billions of dollars for their childcare and their um, uh, care for the elderly a couple of weeks ago. So there is a definite um, return, massive return on investment in supporting childcare. Our government is not there, and therefore we have to just work without them. Uh, and all of these things led to the need for a review. Uh, and as I said, I wanted to do it from an external perspective rather than an internal perspective. We all done Zoom lessons through COVID. Uh, we were no exception, but you know what? Um, it wasn't effective. First month during the lockdown, it, it was okay, it was fun. But very soon you realize childcare is about the person. You know, it's not about using technology excessively, yeah? Um, so let's look at the parents and see what their expectations are for a kindergarten. Like I say, these are things that I came up with as my sort of top two or three hits. Um, for you, it might be different. I'm not saying one is more important than the other. It's a balance, yeah? So what do the parents look for? When a prospective parent comes in, they want to see a safe and clean environment for their child. They want to see a nursery that reflects that, yeah? Um, they want to be assured that their child's well-being will be catered for. You know, what are we doing for that? You know, they want to see a happy environment, whether they come when the children are there or whether they come you know, when the children are not there. They want to be satisfied that we have a happy environment for their children. You know, they want engaging activities as opposed to um, TV on, bag of crisps. Yeah? They want to see some engaging activities. They want to see qualified staff. They want to know that you know, we are using qualified staff as opposed to uh, this is just a hobby for us. Yeah? And they want to see collaborative relationships that we will build with, the, with them. Because parents need help. You know, uh, they are not educationalists. Uh, they need help and they are looking for how we can actually collaborate with them uh, uh, for the benefit of their children. And the end result is, what they want is, their children graduating from our nursery into uh, a reception school, junior school, as confident young adults. Um, you know, every year uh, when our cohort goes to the new school, we have a graduation ceremony, and it's incredible how the children feel like they're grown up just by wearing the gown and having that ceremony. And the parents feel very proud that, yes, it has been a success for them. So that's what the parents' expectations are. What's the child's expectation? Well, they want to be fed on time, okay? They don't want to be hungry. And in a way, a child is actually quite good because, um, you know, they'll be quite happy at home watching TV, bag of crisps, uh, and they'll also be very happy in a very positive envir nursery environment because they, they are very accommodating, right? Uh, they can't really articulate what's good for them, what's bad for them, apart from some things like give me food on time, uh, you know, Oh, my nappy is changed on time, yeah, uh, when they're needed. Uh, you know, their health care things are taken care of. You know, they want to have fun. Yeah, and, you know, most of us will agree that learning through fun is actually a best way of learning, right? So they want to have fun. Yeah, they want to be stimulated. They don't want to be bored because a bored child is actually a very problemsome child for us. They're hard work, so let's make it uh, stimulate them and they'll be easy to look after. And they want some bonding with their teachers. They want their teachers to be their, um, effectively their uh, substitute parents whilst they're in the nursery. Yeah? And we certainly try and do those things. Uh, and we have some very talented teachers. I'm very blessed with that. that they do actually take care of uh, the child's expectations really well. Uh, the nursery and its expectations. Well, you know, strong leadership. It has to start with strong leadership. Uh, and uh, the leader, um, however we define it, uh, they need to set the tone for that nursery and its children. You know, we as nursery, our staff, 
need to have ambition for our children. We need to, uh, our expectation is that we are ambitious for them. We are saying to them, you can do more than what you're already doing, you know. Uh, and we need to sort of just take them to that next level and push them to that next level. Our staff need to have pride in their work, okay? We need to have continuous training, uh, including the non-statutory training. Uh, we need a motivating environment, be profitable, and have vision and values, yeah? So these are the things that we need to have. Uh, and here is an example where, uh, you know, one of, uh, you know, we have staff training days uh, throughout the day, throughout the uh, period. Uh, our regulators, what they're looking for is strong governance. Um, they're looking for processes and procedures. They're very sort of uh, boxy, maybe. They're looking for record keeping. They want someone who supports and promotes a positive learning culture. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, and obviously, from peers, uh, you know, they want to be proud to be associated with us, and they are proud enough to give us a uh, little thumbs up on our social media. Yeah, and uh, you know, we help them when they need help. That's what our peers are looking for. Um, our local community. You know, uh, our, employment, our, our staff come from the local community, so we provide employment for the local community. So that's important, uh, that's an expectation from the community. Um, a sense of belonging, that you know, we belong to them, they belong to us. Connects with the local healthcare and the local facilities so that our children are actually connected with them. And it acts as a policy driver for local government and decision making. Uh, and in times of crisis, we help each other. So as an example, during COVID, uh, we gave um, 12 NHS, our uh, nurses, free childcare for the first lockdown. I think we did something like 1,100, 1100 free hours of childcare for COVID frontline NHS staff's children. And this was our way of saying to them that we are part of the community and we're here to be uh, help, you know, we want to help when we can, yeah? So bringing it together in a very classical way, you'd think, yes, nice little Venn diagram, let's hit the yellow mid spot, that's quality. Nah, not really, that's a very classical way of thinking about it. Maybe we just go for the other uh, intersections and say it's not high quality, but it's still good. Again, that's a very classical way of thinking. I think we need to move away from that and we need to say, no, actually, we need to hit all of their expectations you know, in every single way. So our nursery must encompass all of their expectations. That's when you really hit quality, yeah? And that's what we are trying to sort of do. So, I'm sort of almost at the end of my um, uh, presentation. Just to say that quality is, as uh, we had in our first presentation, complex, yeah? It, it, there are lots of moving parts here and it's complex. So there's no real one answer. Um, you know, it's not complicated because if it was, there'd be the one answer, little path, little manual, and we could all be there. So it's complex, and you need to work out for yourself what works for you. But have you been paying attention? So let's just check whether you have, okay? So what I, um, what I want to do is uh, I gave you some um, pink slips, yep, yeah, uh, to say what is not high quality, okay? So what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to take this mic away because I can't do two things. I'm going to put mine. Okay. No, no, okay. Uh, that's fine. Okay, uh, just, just, yeah, go on. Put your, yep, so these are things that you regard as not of high quality, okay? So, you put it in a, so, and, yep, have I missed anyone? Great. Excellent. Great. I'm going to go here. Some more here, lovely, thank you very much. So, and some more, perfect. Any more? Great. Some more here. And if you notice very subtly, um, the pink is for things that are indications of low quality. Uh, and I've actually got uh, yellow as indicators of high quality. I'm going to put it in there as well. And you might have noticed that uh, I also have different colored crocs. A very subtle link, right? Now, if you have been listening and paying attention, you will pick out the high quality slip. 
Okay, so what you need to do is focus and make sure, put your hand, pick out one slip, and let's see if you've been focus, concentrating on my presentation or just daydream. Oh, pink, unfortunate. What were you saying? What does it say? Rote learning. Uh, risky learning. Uh, okay. Rote. Say? Rote. Rote learning. Not quite sure who said that. I don't know what that means. Uh, but let's take another one. Okay. Have you been focused on my presentation? No, you haven't. You picked out a pink one. What does that say? Poor workmanship. Okay, so we need to sort of, that's a negative. Okay, look, you must have been, because I saw you being focused and concentrating, right? No, I can't believe it. What does that say? This regular, okay, so we talked about regulation. Look, I'm going to go over here to these sound guys. Okay, because look, they were listening, I'm sure. Guys, can you just, okay, just make sure there's nothing in your hand. Make sure that you're not cheating. Okay, here we go. Pick out. Make sure you've been focused on it. Just one. And it's a yellow. Well done. Okay, so you uh, were, were you listening? Were you focused on? Were you listening and paying attention? Yes. Another yellow. Okay, look. If the sound guys are doing, were paying attention, how come you weren't? Okay, look, I'm going to give you one more chance, okay? Here we go. Pick out one, mix it up, pick a yellow one out, because you were really focused, right? Here we go. It's a pink! <laughs> okay, another one? Come on, you must have. This take. Oh, no, what's going on here? Look, <laughs> it must be good. No. Go. Yeah, you've got to get a yellow. Focus. Focus, Focus on my presentation. Oh, it's man, a pink. You're picking two pinks. Okay, look. Just to prove that this isn't a fix, okay, we have my co-presenters. Now, they knew my presentation, so I'm hoping that they get it right, okay? <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm hoping they get it right. Hey, look, it's a yellow. Will my co presenter go? Okay, will it be a yellow or will it be a pink? Hey, look, it's a yellow. Okay, so I'm just going to do one more just to sort of give an audience one more chance. Okay, my Canadian friends. Sanjay, I picked a virtual yellow. That's another pink. I can't mm -hmm. believe it. Okay, look, um, thank you for being uh, part of uh, my summary. Uh, essentially, <laughs> Uh, it just proves that, you know, maybe, you, okay, look, I, I'm sure you're all focusing. Uh, I want to thank you for being part of it. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you very much.